Let's talk about Hawthorne and specifically the Alistair Clarkson knock-on effect for the Kangaroos. Uh, the CEO of the Kangaroos, Jen Watts, spoke about the pressure on Alistair Clarkson on the weekend. The way Alistair described it is that every interaction that he has is now loaded. And so all of these things that have happened this year, like he, he just hasn't been able to take anything on face value and no one's been able to look at anything he's doing on face value. Hawthorne's report was poor and its response was poor, but I think it was probably created out of good intentions. But it did not create a bridge to deal with hurt. It set up a monumental set of battle lines. The AFL was in an insidious position and its response probably felt like it made sense at the time. But eight months on, no one can honestly believe it's been the right process. Strong words from the two women in charge at the North Melbourne Football Club. Great performance. Great performance on and off camera by Todd Viney too in the last week. The club has been put on a really good face in a time of real adversity. Um, I think they've handled that well, Sonia and, and Jennifer. What that's been the right to actually call out the process for what it is. But Jeff Kennett, on the other hand, not so much. Well, I, I think Jeff's been terrible. I mean, I mean who's running the Hawthorne Football Club? The, we hear behind the scenes. Andrew Gowers spoke briefly. Now he's in touch with Sonia Hood um, every few days, and they're talking and they're getting on. Jeff, on the other hand, is the face of the Hawthorne Football Club publicly. He's the one coming out and commenting. Um, his comments are self self-serving, quite frankly. I mean, even this investigation, Craig. The timing of it. It ends in 2016, which is when Jeff, just before Jeff came back as president. Are you, cri are you critical of Hawthorne for not talking though? Wasn't Alistair Clarkson critical? of people talking? So I think Hawthorne it's... would... No, be... I'm not criticising Hawthorne. I'm criticising Jeff. I think Jeff should zip it. I think, and and I, apparently he even had a crack at Sonia Hood on the weekend privately. Now, you know, seriously, what, what, I think he really needs to stop talking. And the club, I, it's not helping the club. Yes. It's not helping Alistair Clarks. And if he says one more time that Alistair's atomic, now clearly that is a dig. It is a dig and it's a nasty dig at a time that, you know this great premiership coach who might have handled things better this year and we saw the red flags mm. but we didn't know it would end like this. I think it's frankly quite nasty and almost bullying behaviour. They were called shameful so that's probably what brought Hawthorne and Jeff to speak a lot in the last week or two. Yeah, well, not so much he's Hawthorne, not, though. He's not going away, though, Jeff, is he, on the commentary on the Hawthorne Footy Club, which is clear. Uh, tell me about the way they played on the weekend. Yeah, the well, it just had me thinking that that's the best performance. And, you know, Kane, uh, we've discussed around just the lack of effort in the previous seven weeks at North Melbourne, which has just shocked us. We didn't expect them to win too many, but it's this the limp performances. Yet, Ratton took over on the weekend... And suddenly it was, yeah, the positivity that's come out. They did all but win that game. So that's where they've got to be really uh, sit back and go, even if the, the charges are dropped, when is the right time for Alistair to come back from a headspace perspective? Because the players weren't performing under the pressures that Alistair was under, whether it was he was putting off vibes that made them go into their shells. They played much, much better under Brett Ratner. I know it can happen the first week of a new coach, but they have to seriously look at that and ask the players, what was it about Alistair that was making you play with no effort you still, you still think he's the right guy for that group, Alistair? Oh, well, I, I thought he was a, uh, they, his appointment gave them hope. Gave them real hope. You still hope. think that? Uh, well, if he can... It's all on his frame of mind. I think this is... A, the, walking away now is the best thing he could yeah. have done. And it's not just a reset to get over what's happened to him with the racism allegations, but it's a reset of his entire coaching philosophy. Now, obviously, they didn't win in the end on Saturday. We know why. And let's have a listen to the interim coach, first of all, Brett Ratton, and then Todd Viney. Now, there's sometimes um, a chat about we, we're getting close... Um, with the rotations, but yeah, there's nothing from a senior coach's point of view that I'm looking at the interchanges. There's so much going on in the game, so no, we just leave that to the bench. The one thing this club is about is looking after our people, and we win together and we we'll lose together. And there's not one person that's at fault at this. There was a breakdown of communication from a number of people, and our system wasn't quite good enough. So we own that, and we'll get better as a as a club.
I'm glad Todd said that because I thought when I heard Brett Ratton's comments on the weekend, gee, that's a bit rough. I mean, really, you'd, you'd be frustrated, you'd be annoyed, but you've probably got to take collective responsibility for something like that, even if it's not your fault. It was a complete balls up mm. and pretty unprofessional. He should have owned it at the time, but that, at least it's yeah. happened. But I didn't think he said it in a vindictive or nasty way. He's no, he it... spot on. There's not one coach that monitors rotations. No, I know that. It doesn't that. matter. He should have just owned it and moved on and took the pressure off the bench. I'm glad Todd Viney yeah. said what I he said. I didn't like it either. But he did, I don't think he'd been any harm by it, but he just didn't read the play.